Volunteer teams are out tonight. They're working to count the number of people who are living on the streets out there across the entire Portland Metro. So these teams go out, they count folks living in tents, but also in shelters and officials use that data to figure out how they can help. Lisa Balick dug into this whole process. Lisa, they admit this isn't necessarily an accurate account, right? Yeah, I asked them about that and they say, yes, it is an estimate. And they just essentially compare the estimate from this year to the one last year to see what's happening and try and get some decisions made on the housing needs and mental health needs, especially with what's happening this time around. I think the point in time count is a powerful benchmark for us to see what is changing or not in our communities. A command center set up at Portland State University, tracking the teams that fanned out across the county this week, going tent to tent, shelter to shelter, talking with people without a permanent home, living under bridges, in the woods, in their cars. The only people who are going out to say the encampments are people with existing relationships with people experiencing homelessness. So we rely on our outreach workers, we rely on people who are doing mutual aid or volunteer outreach. The point in time count asks those they find about their situation on January 24th, last night. The project required and funded primarily from the federal government. It's done around the country. More than 6,000 people identified as homeless in the Tri-County area last year. The people doing the survey work asked the homeless about 20 questions, like whether they have a mental health or drug issue, how long they've been homeless, all the information compiled and analyzed in the next several months. I talked one-on-one -on -one with the new head of Multnomah County today about what she plans to do with this information. She's right now working on the county budget. There are a lot of different uh, reasons that people enter into um, homelessness, right? Sometimes it's an economic reason, and for that person, it may just be they need rental assistance. For some people, they experience more complex issues around mental health or addiction, and um, what they need is going to look different. Of course, trying to find everyone who's homeless is impossible. Extremely difficult to find are people in temporary shelter, staying with family or friends. Those in charge of the count say they know it's an undercount, but it's a starting point to know how much housing is needed and what physical and mental issues those who are homeless are facing and need help with. Now, again, it's a critical issue in the state legislature, both city and county governments in the coming months. Some $300,000, mostly federal money, is being used for this count going on in the Tri-County area. One thing, though, when I took a look at the questionnaire, what they asked people about, one thing it doesn't have is asking you a question about how did you end up homeless? In other words, could you not pay the rent? Did you lose your job? Well, I reached out back and said, hey, how come these kind of questions are not on here? I was told, well, actually, these questions were made up several years ago. There hasn't been any updates. And hopefully now they will see this and hear this and make some changes. Back to you.